Welcome, my friends, to yet another SSL Extended Episode, this time with very little background music so all your natural sounds preserved. I know some of you are going to love it, and the rest, well, that's what the fast-forward button is for. Thanks for coming to watch our latest episode, and we'll see you out there. I think everything is ready to go. We have our life jackets. We made our last minute shopping. The cockpit is all ready to go. I just put the cushions out. So it's all set up for comfort, for us to chill out here. I think Madalena and I are gonna make some jewelry together on our way uh, to Chagras. We'll see what happens. I got my snack. Cucumbers are like my favorite snack. So yeah, we're just uh, doing a final check and then we're gonna call the guys and cast off and go to Chagras River. We leave it to the Shelter Bay Gracias. Marina, guys. Destination Chagas River. I'll hold on to this. <laughs> Strong muscles. <laughs> That's what the gym is for. Yep. That's right. Beautiful. All right, guys. Bye bye. See you, See you Andy. Soon. See you soon. Perfect. Thank you so much, man. Paulo is a big pleasure. Thank you, man. Have a good day. Oh, yeah, the same for us. One of these days we stole it. Chagras River. And 
and we've heard lots of really good things about it. That it's very isolated. And beautiful. And beautiful. So we're gonna anchor there, I think, just for one night. And then you get to swim with alligators. <laughs> yeah, they have crocodiles there. So hopefully we'll see a crocodile. That would be really cool. Oh, you know, crocodiles, alligators. <laughs> we all taste the same to them. I don't, yeah. <laughs> Lion the jig. Looks like there's enough wind to sail. That's so fun. We'll do a little bit of sailing. So we got a little wind. It's going to be just on our cross breeze on the port beam. So might as well catch it while we can. Absolutely. Let's get a look from this side. She's pretty. So exciting to be sailing. Oh, nice sounds. Sounds of silence. Yeah. yeah. You got the cucumber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> uh, fresh, now we press something the same for the, for the captain. It's two o'clock. Mm. Oh yeah, I should check my uh, upload. Make sure if it's still running. Uh, <laughs> sure, yeah, the connection is very bad. Well, now in Chagres, we don't have any more internet and a connection for 24 hours. All the silence, bird, all the sound of uh, the tropical forest. What? <laughs> <laughs> We're sailing, Tiki. Finally off, and we've got our jib flying. We're gonna make the best of the wind that we have, and use this time to sail a little bit. It's pretty exciting, that feeling of turning off the engine, and then just being under the power of the wind. It's pretty cool. in like a really happy place and it's so cool how I don't know how all of this has come together and how sometimes you just meet the right people and crazy things happen. What you doing? Just checking things out. How are we doing? I mean we're doing good. We're on beam reach. Fall knots of wind. Uh, see, this is the issue. We're only doing 1.2, 2.5, up and down between even 0 0.0. <laughs> but we have only just, I mean, we started right there where the blue dot is, that Shelter Bay Marina. So we came out here, went through the entrance, and now we've sailed and we've come back here. So we're basically just parallel with where they, we started. Hmm. And Chagres River is down here. So that's all we've done for the last couple hours, just go out the entrance and come back to here, equal to where we started from. So the only problem is it's three o'clock and we are making less than two knots because <laughs> the current's not helping us. We've got a counter current for sure that's pushing against us right now. And we need to get in here before it gets too dark because we need some light to be able to see the bottom. There's shoals on both sides and that's, it's a very poorly marked entrance. So we need to just get in there and upriver because we got two miles to go upriver before we find our place where we're going to anchor. So it's a long river and we wind up into here somewhere. And that's where we drop the hook for the night. So unfortunately, even though we've got wind to sail, we should be doing three, four knots, but we're only doing less than two because of the current. So we need to kick it.
unfortunately. So even when we get to sail, <laughs> we don't get to sail because it's going to put us in jeopardy if we arrive too late in the day and then we have engine troubles in the entrance, that would be very bad. Mm. So I'm going to have to give us a push, unfortunately. Mm. Oh well, it was a nice half hour while it lasted. Mm. True that. <clears throat> buzzer so I can't tell you. Uh oh. Engine trouble. And so it begins. Yeah. Da, da, da. But I can't hear if it's doing anything so can you go up and just turn it on and push the button so I can hear sure. what it's actually doing down here? And the engine is lazy. <laughs> yeah, it's lazy. Okay, that's it. No, it's a battery issue. So maybe the starter battery is depleted. Well, it shouldn't be, but this is the charger for the starter battery. Got 26 volts coming in. Now I got 14 volts. So let's check it at the starter also, but 14 volts is where it should be. 14 volts. It better not be the starter or we have a major issue. The starter is not old. 14 point 14 volts. Well, let me try a big screwdriver. See if it's solenoid issue. Be waiting. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh. That is not good issue to have out here at three o'clock in the afternoon. Could we double back to Shelter Bay? Well, even there, we can't start the engine to go into the thing, remember? They won't let us come in under sail. Seato? You got $10,000? Yeah. It's not the battery. It's not the battery. It's not the battery. I think it's the starter. It's, uh... Fuck. So we're having some engine troubles. Uh, the engine is making like a weird noise. Uh, starting, I think. I'll get more details on that, but uh, we think it's something with the starter. And we're kind of just floating around, uh, kind of parallel to Shelter Bay where we came from. And there is like no wind. No, nothing. We're just sort of floating around. And uh, right now, the captain is trying to think of a solution. So. You are my selfie son. Oh, I love you so much. That is the sound of a running engine. Cool. You are a copy dairy. No. You are my big guy. It was a bad connection. One of the bolts on the battery itself had rattled loose just enough. And as soon as I touched it, it was just like starting to move. Okay. I noticed that as soon as I was testing it, 
the voltage because I asked him to start it, yeah. like press the starter while I'm touching it, and I want to see how much the voltage dropped, and it dropped down to like 10 and a half volts. Wow. But then I saw smoke start coming off the one connection. <laughs> so sure enough, yeah, I twisted that, and it was like, yeah, it was loose. Wow. So I tightened that up, tightened up the other one. The ground was okay, but the positive was loose. The battery, or the starter voltage, or the starter wire terminals are okay. They were fine. But this one on the battery was loose and that's why it was overloading. It was causing way too much current trying to pull through a loose connection. The voltage dropped and that was it, it wouldn't start. All right, we're back in business. Yeah, these, uh, everybody knows about experience. Yeah. Everybody we know about experience. Capitari. But hey, that's why I get paid the big bucks, right? Yeah. Not. <laughs> it's a thankless job, but somebody's got to do it. All right, sockets. Yay, sockets. We coming. All right. Now can I see it? Oh. <laughs> oh we still got a it's all on too. ours, though. <laughs> That's the uh, oh, R-rated version. Exactly. <laughs> so I have a spare starter. I have a spare starter, but to start taking that apart out here at 3.30 in the afternoon is asking for more trouble. Alright, let's just get there. to relax a bit after all that after the engine wouldn't turn on I don't know, it made me nervous it's funny, as soon as we turned it off I was really happy that it was off and it was quiet and the second we needed to turn it on and it didn't turn on it was stressful but you have to stay calm and think through the problem now everything's working, so we can chill now. Chill for a little bit, look up at the jib. It's really nice out. Mm. Oh, we're almost there, yeah. So we got less than a mile to go, but that's the entrance right there. You can see in the trees, and up on top of that last tree is San Lorenzo, and that's the biggest fort over this way. And that fort was put there to defend the city from any attackers from the Caribbean side because they could still make their way up through the river and get across to Panama City. And the only one that ever did it, of course, was Captain Morgan. Good old Henry Morgan. Blew the shit out of it, took control, went up the river, ransacked the city, killed everybody, stole everything, and left. <laughs> Typical Captain Morgan fashion. And then he came back out here and took off, but yeah, the fort is still there. They rebuilt it, but of course, they moved the city after that. So they took Panama City, now that's where Old Town is, and they moved it way over to where the new city is, developed it in a further away location, more safe from the river. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, this is the entrance to Chagas River right here. And as we come in, we're right here, but there is literally no markings on this chart. No depth information hardly at all, except that there's shoals there and shoals on this side. And you have to find your way between these two and get in without hitting anything. Okay, so so therein lies the trick, <laughs> getting in without hitting anything. 
So yeah, our day's not over yet. That's what we have to do next. And of course, we have no direct sunlight overhead, so we can't tell the water depth. We can track the depth as we go in, but we can't see where the shoals are on either side of the boat as we go in, and that's that's going to be the the sketchy area. So we will see how that goes. But that's what's next. at the entrance to the Chagras River. Fifteen feet, but the waves are starting to get right on the beam. They're all breaking on this reef right beside us. That's a little nerve-wracking. So right now, because the depth is very shallow, we're gonna keep an eye out for shoals and that sort of stuff so that we don't run aground. Yeah, it's very shallow here. But we can't go anymore to this side because there's a bed of rocks right over there somewhere that aren't identified anywhere. They're not barely on the chart and they're not marked with any deep or anything. can't see it because there's kind of like a peninsula sticking out in front of it so we have to keep going until we can see it and then turn and go in. Okay. We're still in 14 to 15 feet so not bad. Starting to lose the rolling but we still got a little bit. water here momentarily hopefully if we have passed the rocks either that or we hit the rocks I hope not <laughs>
job. Look over here at these trees. Oh, wow. That is some gnarly roots. Wow. So There's a couple. There's a couple of paths flying towards us. Oh, yeah? Okay. Okay, right over here. Yeah. Wow, yeah. I'm not very good at I'm not very good at catching the birds on camera yet. I can hear the howler monkeys. I don't know if you can. Right now we're looking out if we're going to hit anything in the river. Can't you hear there's monkeys back there? Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking, we hear the monkeys and he started calling out to them. I was like, oh yeah, because we're monkeys too with our bananas. Oh, what's that gadget? The remote control. To call the monkeys. Oh, for the autopilot. Yeah, oh. I can see the boat from up here. I'm like, that doesn't look like the anchor remote <laughs> control. No, it's got all my waypoint information, speed, heading. And most importantly, depth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh we're back at 37. That's okay, that's good. Yeah, it's deeper in the river. At first, it felt weird taking a sailboat into a river. Into a river. <laughs> now I see the appeal. Yeah, it's cool. It's only the second time I've been up here. It's gonna be really cool with the electric hanging. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. How far are you How far? Oh yeah?
found another bend. Wow. It's our turn to anchor. Here we are. Okay. Parrots seem happy. Parrots are happy because we are here. So you went in. Anchor time. If it's raining, yeah, we have a good, a good meditation spot. spot. Yeah. yeah, just right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, Megan, we move. Ready? Be careful. Okay. goes from the outside, right? Yeah, God. Outside. So over one of the chain links. And then outside. Nothing. Okay. Like and that. now with the contour. You switch on and need a little bit more. Okay. Go down. It's better than this.
hear that, guys? The sound of near silence. You can hear a few things going on down inside the boat, and that's about it, but... All the creatures out in the jungle. But it's so nice to be just out here in the middle of nowhere and just listening to nothingness but nature. Everybody's working down below, doing some food preparation. And I've got the barbecue going. We're heating up a few good things. Got some chicken waiting. And we got red peppers, zucchini grilling, corn on the cob, everything ready and waiting. And then we put the chicken on soon. Okay. With that, are you ready for dinner too, Kiki? You ready for dinner too? Yes, I think so, huh? Can't see you. Too, too, pretty girl. And down below. Got Megan making her goodness hello, too. Hello. <laughs> Got the Instapot going. Oh yeah, gonna have lots of veggies tonight. Cool, cool. Yeah, everything's shut down for the night, just waiting for dinner. We're very lucky. Yeah, it was a very nice day on the water. That's for sure. And of course, toast time. Mm. A little bit of nice vino for okay. before dinner. And just about time for Tiki to go inside too, huh? Yeah. Time to turn the veggies. Mm. I'll let those finish up, and then it's just about dinner time. Here's to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 